Hello everyone and welcome to Azam Sharp Weekly. And in this video, I'm going to show you that how you can use your view models for state management. First, let's go ahead and take a look at a very simple application which only contains one view. You can see this is a login screen that contains a text field, a secure field, so that when you type something in the password field, it doesn't actually show up, and a button that doesn't really do anything. You will also notice that I have a state for the username, which is string, and a state for the password, which is also a string. Whenever I type something in the text field, it goes automatically into the username because of this bindable expression. Whenever I type something into secure field, it goes into the password state property because of this bindable expression. Now this is fine and everything should be okay. The only problem is that if we keep on increasing these state properties, maybe it's time for us to take a look at creating a view model that will accommodate the needs for this particular view, not only for populating the fields, but also triggering the web service, which will authenticate the user if the user is logged in or not. So I'm going to go ahead over here and create a new view model. You can call your view model anything you want. I'm just going to call it login view model. All right. Now a login view model will be a simple model, which will be a login view model. And you will see later on that why I'm creating it as a class and not as a structure. It will have a property called username, which will be string. And you can have a property called password and we'll initialize it with nothing or empty password. And that's it. Now we can actually start using this login view model. But in order to use this login view model as our model, we can either declare this as a state, but we know eventually we will be communicating with the web service and web service will authenticate the user. And then based on the authentication status, we will redirect the user to the home screen or we will tell the user that their credentials were incorrect. So I'm gonna go ahead and start using bindable object. Okay, and I will, in order to use that, I will import Swift UI and import combine also. The only requirement of bindable object is that you declare the will change property. Let will change equals to pass through subject void never. Okay, great. Let's go ahead and build that. All right, so this works fine now. Now we can actually go back to our content view and we can start using our new property. So let me go ahead and refresh this. Because sometimes this is Xcode 11 beta 4, so it's not really working correctly. But now I can go back to my content view and I can create this property. So I can go ahead and say private var and then login view model equals to, and then I can say login view model. We will simply initialize it. And I can also go ahead and say object binding over here or binding over here, let's say object binding. There we go. Let's go ahead and build that. Okay, that's good. Now, instead of using this username property and the password property that we were using, we can substitute it with the property that we have in the login view model. So I can say over here, self dot login view model dot username, but I'm gonna go ahead and put a dollar sign over here to indicate that this is a bindable property. And the same will be true for the password. So I can say self dot login view model dot password. And since login view model is a bindable property, I'm just gonna put a dollar sign next to it. I think this is a much better approach. Now all the functionality or all the different properties of logging and providing information to the login view model is now inside the login view model. I can actually even comment out this particular two properties because we don't really need it. Okay. Now in the button click, we want to actually log in the user. So we can go back to our login view model and create a function 
which will allow us to log in. Now I can create a function over here, or I can do an extension and I create a function over there. That's perfectly up to you. I'm just going to say login view model. And then create a simple function. Function, uh, I don't want to use that. So let's go ahead and say login. And it's not going to take anything because we already should have got those property using the bindable expression that we were using. Now over here, we can actually call a web service and authenticate the user. All right, so I'm just gonna say authenticate the user. Okay, the question is that how do you get access to the web service? Now there are multiple ways of accessing the web service. You can actually create an initializer for the login view model, a constructor initializer and, and uh, initialize a web service over there. But I can also create a web service in our content view and pass that service to the login view model. So in other words, login view model will have a dependency on a particular service. Well, currently we don't even have a service. So let's go ahead and create a new file and we will use that for our service. I'm just gonna add a new file, a new Swift file. And over here, I can actually call this authentication service and replace all the code with service. You can see that the authenticate service works on something called a user. It's not working on a view model. So that's one of the things that you have to realize is that the authentication service doesn't really care that much about the view models that you're adding to your application. The authenticate service works on the model, the domain objects that you will create. And we haven't really created any domain object. So let's go ahead and create a domain object and we will call it user. So let's go ahead and add a new file. And that will be the model part of our MVVM. Now user will not really have much going on in there. We will see that user only has a username and password and that's fine. Now when we go to our login view model, we can actually implement our login function. So let me go ahead and implement our login function over here. We don't really have access to the web service yet, but we will. We will go ahead and create a new instance. We're gonna pass in self.username, which hopefully will be already be populated using bindable expression that we checked out. There we go. Now we can actually access our web service, but we don't even have anything, not even a web service defined. So first I'm gonna go over here and define something called an authentication service, which will be of type authentication service. I'm also going to go ahead and create an initializer. So let's go over here and create an initializer. And this initializer is going to take in the authentication service. You can call this anything you want. And we will assign it to the authentication service that we have, auth service. Great. But the question is how would we pass this over here? So I'm gonna go back to my content view. And since now it has a dependency and we need to pass in the service, I'm just gonna pass in the authentication service. There we go. All right. You can do it this way or you can actually create an initializer over here and then pass the service at that particular moment. So basically what I'm saying is that you can actually go over here and create an initializer for this particular view, create an authentication service over here. So private var authentication. So you have multiple options to, to do what you're trying to do. And this will be an authentication service. And we can say self.authentication service equals to authentication service. All right, and then we have a view model over here. So we can also go ahead and say that the view model will actually be initialized in the initializer. So this will be a login view model. And we can go over here and say self.loginVM equals to login view model and passing in the authentication service that we just created. There we go. All right, great. All right, so now let's go back to our login view model and actually utilize the authentication service we just created. So self.authenticationService.authenticate user, which we already have created, and it's gonna fire a completion. We can use this completion to do something. 
we're not really doing anything with the completion right now, but we can if we want to do something. So right now what are we going to do is we are just going to change the state of the login view model to say that it is logged in. But we don't really have any property logged in. And that is a property that we're going to create which will use the will change. So var is logged in. The reason that we are creating the is logged in property is to tell the view that we are logged in and maybe you can take us or reflect or update the view to say, I don't know, logged in, you're logged in or something like that. Eventually you will see that we will be able to go to a different page dynamically once a person is actually logged in. I'm gonna go ahead and say dispatch queue because you have to fire these notifications on a main thread dot async and then we will simply call self dot will change dot send and which is nothing. Now I can actually go ahead and set this over here. So I can say, I can say over here something like self dot is logged in equals to dollar sign zero, which will be the result coming from the authenticate service. If you'd go and check out the authenticate service, you're all always going to get the true. Basically, the person is authenticated. That's great. And now we can go back to our content view and write the code for the login part, which we can do something like self.loginView.login. Great. Now, based on your login, that if you are logging in or you're not logging in, once you are logged in, maybe we want to update something on the screen that the person is logged in. So right now, if you see our canvas, you'll see that we have simply text field, secure field, and a button. But once the person actually logs in, maybe we want to display a message that, hey, you're logged in. But we don't really have any place to display that message. So right over here with the button, I'm just gonna add a text. And let's see if that text appear. I'm just going to say not logged in. Okay, so you can see the text is appearing on the right hand side. But once a person does log in, we want to change this text to say logged in. So we will make a condition over here self dot login view model dot is logged in. If it is logged in, then go ahead and say logged in, else you will say not logged in. All right. Now, since the login view model is actually our bindable object, whenever we are going to send this will change, the content view body is going to fire again. And if at that particular moment is logged in is true, then we will simply print out logged in or else we will print out not logged in. We are changing the is logged in property right over here in our login view model login function based on the result that we get we receive from the authenticate function. In this case, we are always returning the true value as you can see in the authentication service. So no matter what you type in into these login boxes, it will always return you true. Now let's go ahead and give it a try and see how it works. And does it reflect or refresh our content view by showcasing by uh, telling us that the person is logged in or whether the person is not logged in by using that text property that we just added. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, so I've already pressed on this live screen button and you can see that the, it's refreshed. Let's go ahead and enter some information. It actually doesn't really matter what you're entering over here because it's always going to be uh, authenticated to be true. And when I do log in, you can see that it actually changes this to logged in. This is super awesome because now we know that the person is actually logged in. So you saw that in our application, we created or we utilize the login view model. We also utilize created a service pass to the login view model. And the login view model is not directly calling the web service. You can see over here in the login view model, Login view model is taking help from the authentication service. So that's one of the things that you have to be very careful in the login function over here. Don't put the code to actually make a web service call using NSURL session or things like that. 
because then the login view model will be doing a number of different things, which includes being acting as a service and communicating with some URL or web API, which you don't really want to do. You want to isolate those things into a separate file or a separate service, separate entity. The other big thing to note over here is that we are not passing to the authenticate service the view model. View model ends when we have done populating the view model using the view. Then you have to populate the actual model, which is the domain object, and then pass that domain object to the database, to the web service, and get results back. All right. Now, one of the things that this particular application is actually missing is ability to go or navigate to a different screen dynamically. So basically, in this case, if I go ahead and click on the login button, I should be able to go to a different screen based on the authentication status. So if I am authenticated true, I should just go to a home screen. If I am authenticated false, maybe I should just stay over here and it should just say, well, you know, nothing happened or something, all right? And that is what we are going to do in the future video. I'm going to show you that how you can dynamically navigate on a click of a button from one screen to the other screen based on the result that you get from a web service. So that will be in the next video that I will cover, all right? So thank you so much. If you want to support my work, then the best way would be check out my new course, which is Swift UI Declarative Interfaces for any Apple device. This is a seven hour plus course on Swift UI and I keep on adding new content as I learn new things. You'll see that the course starts with creating list and navigation, grid layout, state management and binding, which is very important, but also dives into the understanding of MVVM design pattern and also Web API. So it will show you how you can communicate with a Web API, get the data displayed on the screen. It doesn't stop there because it also covers gestures, property wrappers, form, models, and much, much more. So this is the complete course on Swift UI development. Now here's the thing, the link to the course along with the coupon is already in the YouTube description. So please use that coupon to get the best deal possible. Now Udemy is actually changing the pricing scheme in a couple of months or in the future. So make sure that you take advantage of this particular uh, deal that I'm doing because I cannot guarantee if this deal is going to last in the future. So maybe next month you come and it will be all gone. All right, so please use the coupons that I have added in the YouTube description. It will really help me and you will get the best deal possible. So thank you so much for supporting my channel. And if you have any questions, please let me know.